Hi, my name is Catherine and I work for RALSpace. I studied aerospace engineering at university and then after that I went straight onto our graduate scheme and I've been working as a spacecraft thermal engineer ever since. As a thermal engineer I'm trying to make sure that everything on our instruments is the right temperature because if it's too hot on the side of the sun then things might melt and if it's too cold on the side of the spacecraft that faces deep space then things might shatter so it's important that we understand these temperatures. I also do some testing on the spacecraft, which is where we take the instrument that we've built and we make sure that everything works as we'd expect, because once it's up in space, we can't go up there and fix it. So we've got to make sure that we got it right first time. So today we will be talking about sustainable food. The United Nations has 17 goals for how they'd like to make sustainable development happen. Many of these are related to food, such as being a responsible consumer and producer or trying to reduce hunger. Around 40% of the fruit and vegetables that are grown in India currently never make it onto people's plates. And that's a problem that we hope to solve through this project. It's a problem not only because of the hunger issue, but also due to the greenhouse gases that occur when these food products are wasted, and also increases poverty in the farmers who aren't getting the money they need from the produce that they're uh, growing. So I'm working on a project called Transition, and that's funded by the Global Challenges Research Fund, which brings together people who know about lots of different things. So I'm coming at it from the aspect of a thermal engineer, understanding how materials deal with different temperatures. And we have other people who understand the supply chain. That's how the food gets transported all the way from the farm to the markets via different trucks and different storage depots and things. And we have people from the University of Sheffield who understand that. And then we have people in India itself who are working with farmers, who are working with the people who transport the food, who are working with the people who sell the food in order to understand what the problem's actually like in India. So in the UK, when we're transporting food, we use refrigerated vans and we store it in big fridges. But in India, that's not really the case so much. So the fruit and vegetables are subjected to the heat of the Indian sun. And that's partly due to the cost of buying the fancy refrigerated vans or buying the big warehouses that are refrigerated. So in this project, we're looking to find simple solutions that people can actually use in order to try and reduce the waste of fruit and vegetables in India. So it may not be obvious why the space industry is linked to this. As a thermal engineer, I have to understand how materials react to heat inputs. So how well a material stores heat and how well the surface of a material reflects heat. So the outside of a spacecraft is often covered in shiny foil and that's to reflect the heat away. If you think about if you go out on a sunny day in a black t-shirt, quite often the t-shirt will get really hot as compared to when you're wearing a white t-shirt and that's because it's a black surface which absorbs lots of heat. So by thinking about things like this we can come up with simple solutions that we might be able to put into place in India that could reduce lots of food waste. We also have people looking at other parts of the supply chain so when the food is coming out of the farms, how many times it stops along the way before it gets to the markets, how many times people handle it to check the produce, because every time it stops and every time it's handled, that's another thing that it's going to lead to it rotting. So by the end of this project, we hope to have found a solution which will make a difference in India and is something that people will actually be able to put in place. So now I'm going to move on to people's questions. The first one is, how can we know about food waste from space? I can't think of a way that food waste can be actively monitored from space, but we can look at things like the greenhouse emissions. So how much of that is gathering in the atmosphere? There are lots of spacecraft that are measuring that kind of thing. So that's a way of understanding a little bit the impact of food waste and the food rotting. The next question is, why is food waste an issue in India? So for me, 
as a personal how I see it, food waste is an issue because it leads to things like the poverty of farmers, people going hungry, and also the greenhouse gas emissions. And lots of this is because people in India are increasingly moving to the cities, meaning the food has to travel further to get from the farms onto people's plates. And that means that there's more time for it to start going off in the heat of the Indian summer. So the next question is, what kind of things do people do at Ral Space? So I'm an engineer and I work with lots of other engineers with different specialties like mechanical engineering and optical engineering on the design of instruments. But we also have scientists who are looking at future missions to go and investigate different things. We have um, data people who take the data that's coming down from satellites and provide it to universities to do research. So a whole range of different things. Um, the next question is, why do we need satellites to study the Earth's climate? So the nice thing about a satellite is that it can cover the whole of the Earth's surface. So we can gain an understanding of what's going on over the whole of the Earth. Whereas if we wanted to do this not by going into space, we'd have to have people collecting data all over the Earth at all times to understand how big the problem is and what the causes are. So by using satellites, we can do that relatively simply without having people spread all over the globe trying to solve the same thing. And we can have people, we all people from all over using that data to try and understand it in different ways. Um, the next question is, are you building the instrument yourself or designing it? So I'm just do on the design side of things and then we have technicians who do the actual building of the instrument. Um, which subjects did you study at school? At A-level I did maths, further maths, physics and history. I quite liked having the mix of all of the maths and physics things that I needed to become an engineer and then a little bit of history that gave me a, a bit of a change of scenery and helps me now when I'm writing reports because I'm used to writing long documents from my A-levels, so that's something. <laughs> Um, what's your favourite part of your job? So personally, I really enjoy the thermal test campaigns. That's where we're taking an instrument that we've built and checking that it works as we'd expect. And that all the temperatures are the same as in our computer models to make sure that once it gets launched into space, everything is going to work perfectly and nothing's gone wrong while it's being built. Um, the next question is, why is sustainability an important part of your work? I think sustainability is important to everyone these days. We know the impacts of climate change and we know we've got to try and solve that. And as someone who works quite often on spacecraft that are looking down at the Earth and trying to understand climate change, I see sustainability as important in that aspect of understanding it and seeing how we can solve it using the data we're getting down from the spacecraft. And the final question is, what did you want to be when you were little? So oddly, I don't think I had a career path I wanted to go into, but both of my parents are aerospace engineers, so I guess I was sort of always led down that route, and I grew up watching rocket launches from Florida. So I guess that's what inspired me deep down to eventually go into the space industry. Cool. Thank you for listening, everyone.